Hi, I'm here with Paralympian Lee Pearson um, and he's kindly agreed to answer some questions for us today. Um, can we start off by talking about horses? Yes. So you were riding Gentleman earlier, yes. right? can you tell us a bit about him? Gentleman is an 11 year old Hanoverian and I bought him when he was 6 years old as my Beijing prospect. <laughs> Um, he is the most moody gelding I have ever, the most moody horse I've ever trained. He is a gelding, but he acts <laughs> like a mare. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't like anything changing. He doesn't like, he likes his own space. He'll pull his face when you're going to, he has bitten a few people. He's, he can be quite really, really moody. Um, but he does love a cuddle. He's quite insecure, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not. He doesn't. He, he doesn't. He's not moody just because he's naturally moody. He's moody because he's just a little bit insecure, both in his stable and and to train. Mm -hmm. He's seventeen two hands high, and um, quite big moving as well. Yes. Yep. Um, and yeah, he's won more gold medals than any other horse, including Blue Circle Boy, which most people recognise me with the big mm -hmm. golden dun yes. horse that we had. Yep. Um, Everyone thinks that he's my most famous and uh, medals horse, but no, gentleman's won more uh, medals at European, World and Paralympic than, than any other horse. Goodness me. How many has he won? I don't know. I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> God. Um, I don't know. He's won three Europeans at least, three Worlds, six, um, Beijing, nine. Um, I'm wondering whether we've had another uh, European since then, but nine at least. Goodness. And so, so he's in contention for London, mm -hmm. and we're still looking for another one at the moment. Oh, really? So there's a backup, or even better than whatever gentleman can come up with. Ah, mm. I see. Right. Well, while we're talking about medals, how many have you won in total? Because you've won a lot, haven't I you? I think it's 28. 28? Goodness yeah, me. Yeah, European, World and Paralympic level. Wow. 28 gold medals. Is there is there one that is more memorable than the others? That's, one win? Yeah, it has to be your first. Yeah, really? your first, um, well, my first Paralympic was when I went to the World Championships in 1999. So mm -hmm. that was quite surreal because I'd never been to a championships before. And then to go there and win three gold medals was quite strange. And that was a borrowed horse competition. So we, we went to Denmark, pulled a number out of a hat. And oh, my goodness. That was the horse you rode. Mm -hmm. And then to, your Paralympics, nobody ever dreams, really, that you're ever going to go to a Paralympics or an Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. And that was a borrowed horse competition for us. So that was a horse called Chip Chase Meknes. And he was a pure Arab. Oh, really? Pony club, riding club <laughs> horse. And we tweaked him and turned him around within the time scales that we had. And, um, yeah, I won my first gold medal with him. And I think that is your most memorable because mm. I'm just a normal down-to-earth riding club person, really. And to go to go to Paralympics and win, win a medal was phenomenal. Yeah, incredible, incredible. And so, so many medals since. So then we can move on to the Paralympics this year. Yeah. Um, what are your hopes? <laughs> <laughs> My hopes are to be selected mm -hmm. because the British uh, squad, the riders in this country, I think we have about 250 para riders in this country, so selection is not taken, taken for granted because mm -hmm. there's a lot of up and coming good riders out there. So I think you've won, nearly won a gold medal if you've made the British Paralympic dressage team, I think. Mm -hmm. There's only f there's five places that we're fighting yes. for. Um, so that's my first hope. Um, my second hope is which my horses stay sound mm. and safe <laughs> up to them because we all know what horses are like. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to think about winning a gold medal because with the Paralympics and the Olympics being in London, our, our host games, it would, it would be totally life-changing. Yes. But each, each, each games I've done has been life-changing, but I think it'll put Paralympians on the map Mm -hmm. as a whole not just within equestrianism mm -hmm. um, we're kind of pretty well supported within within equestrianism but i think we will become household names if you if you win a gold medal yeah. and i think that's just good for 
the world really. Um, Absolutely. The yeah. inspiration that other disabled athletes give to, uh, I mean, I say others because it's horrible talking about yourself, isn't it? Like <laughs> that, but we receive a lot of emails mm. about the change for good that just us competing in our sport does. It's quite phenomenal, mm -hmm. and that can only be better. And um, with the with the British media following the Paralympic athletes like they do. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so, kind of going back to kind of para dressage as a sport, what do you think is the biggest challenge? Getting on. Getting on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most of the disabled athletes, it's getting on's a okay. bit a big big, big challenge. Um, I don't think we really have any challenges. We're, we're, uh, most of the riders are quite character, quite big characters within mm. within the the structure of pa Paralympics GB, uh, the team that will, will be sent to the Paralympic Games. Um, um, I think I think equestrianism as a whole has this elitist image, mm. but with my common accent from Stoke on Trent, I, I quite <laughs> I, I quite um, I'm quite good at um, nipping that one in the bud. Um, <laughs> I don't think the challenge is a team, a uh, British Paralympic team, uh, dressage. I think it's obviously the other, mainly the other European countries mm. like Norway, Germany, mm -hmm. uh, and Denmark, for example. But um, because of the structure of our sport, that you don't need a technically highly trained horse, you need a horse to go in there with good paces and stay in a very rhythmic, mm -hmm. harmonious way of going. Um, the likes, say, of the Americans, they could just buy some top horses and mm. just go in there and um, and pilot pilot them around. We have to be aware of that. Of that, if these countries that have found some sponsorship to to gain good structures and and good horses, then there could be a country just come out of the woodwork. Mm. Um, but the good, what we do have on our side is the confidence that we we as a team have gone in there and done it time and time again. So. Let's hope that confidence stays with us. Yes, absolutely. Um, going, just picking up on something you said then when you were talking about kind of having a horse that's quite rhythmical and things like that, what else do you look for in your horses? Well, it depends on what level of disability. I'm a grade one B rider, so I'm in the, there's five grades and that's, uh, you're selected to compete within one of those grades depending on the severity of your dis disability. And that goes from grade one A, which is the most severely disabled. They do a walk only test and they can trot in their freestyle to music. And it goes all, all the way up to a grade four. And grade four do an equivalent to elementary medium level test in their championship tests. And then they go up to pre-St. George in their freestyle to music. And that could be a grade four rider, could just have a limb missing or mm. complications with their joints, et cetera, et cetera. Blind riders go at grade three and then quite severely disabled riders go at grade one, B and, and, and two. Um, so, you need a horse with real good basic paces. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a grade four rider, you need a horse with a really correct walk because these tests have a lot more walk and trot um, than, 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 other, than other tests would. Um, grade one B's walk and trot and lateral work in the freestyle if you so choose. Mm -hmm. Grade two the same, but with more extensions and tighter circles in the championship test. Grade three is equivalent to elementary level, going up to advanced medium. So um, it's the the bit more focused on the pure basic paces of the yep. horse and the harmony mm -hmm. but at the same time if you can incorporate a little bit of power into that and a little yep. bit of pizzazz mm -hmm. as long as it doesn't go against you and cause tension yep. then you can try and get your marks up the worst thing to do is be flying around with a big flashy horse that's really tight yeah so supple as possible mm. okay and uh finally what's the what's the best part of being a power dressage rider Oh, I've not been asked that one before. What is the best part of being a power dressage rider? Oh, I think... I think the best part of being a Paralympic dressage rider is because we have team training mm. once a month and we get together as a team and we know each other's personalities, what the other, person, what the other riders like and dislike. Mm -hmm. And I think... Maybe compared to some of the other squads, I mean, we're there for the whole two days, two nights sometimes. Um, we just bond really, really well as a Cohesive team. team. Yeah. And there's lots of different personalities, different ages within that team. But I think, I think that's part of our success, really, that, that, we, that we gather together, usually monthly, mm -hmm. and train together. And then we work as a, as a, te a great team. Oh, that's great.
Well, thank you very much. No, thank you. Um, I have tickets, so I'm hoping Brilliant. to see you there. I don't have tickets, so I'm hoping to be there. I know. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what Ricky said to me earlier. Yeah. He was like, well, you might be there, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so that would be great. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so side on to me, so you're dead side on to me. That's it. And whoop, perfect. 